Welcome back to Factory Sealed. It is January 17th, 2016. My name's Eric Peterson. Joining me today, Mr. Daniel Curtis. Hello, my friend. How are you? I am just spiffing. How are you, Daniel? I'm also spiffing. Thank you very much. What exactly is... does spiffing mean? Um, spiffing is a generic, oldie English term for absolutely wonderful. Like, just super flamboyantly awesome. Yeah. So I think it's maybe used ironically nowadays but so if i you say you're spiffing it actually means you're doing shit yeah generally nine times out of ten when you ask somebody from england how they are they will mourn so we just don't bother <laughs> so it's not it's not generally accepted they'll, over they'll there go, they'll, they'll go hey, i'm all right but then then you in your head you go why did i ask and then they'll go hey, this shit happened so it's not generally matter. accepted over there that if people ask you how you are, you just reply good, even though you're not. Yeah. Over there, people will actually you just don't tell ask you. How, just, or just don't ask how people are. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> oh, well, I'm doing shit today. And then you just run away and just don't speak to them ever again. So the proper way to say it would be I'm not spiffing. Yes. But as you know, us Englanders are quite sarcastic. So. A quid? Like a dollar? Not quite. Oh, you said quid. I didn't say quid. I'm going to rewind the tape. You said quid. <laughs> what is this, 1980? Uh, yes, I'm using a double tracking machine. I've got two spools of tape. That You've I got have... like a hand crank. Yeah. <laughs> I have to keep it nice and consistent. Like those old timey films that if you play it back too quick. Yeah. Let's get That's this out of my the... internet drops out whoever's hand cranking it occasionally stops i thought <laughs> it was crystal tight. hand cranking it might be we should uh get this out of the way first before we get two hours into this and realize that you and i are the only ones talking it is in fact a two-man show today oh god thomas is entertaining guests in his massive abode <laughs> they're all sitting around drinking tea and having like very small cakes <laughs> <laughs> How are you today? I'm quite. <laughs> quite, 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 yes. <laughs> so I must say, these very small cakes are sublime, must you? <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be quite the affair. Volavons and stuff. What? It's a volavon. What's a volavon? It's a weird small pastry. Like a cookie? No. <laughs> Not like a cookie. How do you spell that? Vol. I, I honestly don't know. Volvadon. I'm, I'm not posh enough to know what it is. V O L A U A U dash vent. You called it a vol. Oh, okay. It's a small hollow case. Of no, cuff- I did not mean Voldemort. Google. <laughs> Jesus, that looks did like you? a tractor tire made out of bread. <laughs> It's for posh people. It's what, it's what you have on a buffet. Jeeves, bring me the tractor tires made out of bread. <laughs> so right now, as we speak, Tom's guests are sitting around eating those. <laughs> sipping. And small, and small cakes. Sipping hot tea. Drinking Earl Grey. So I feel like I let Tom down when I took uh, that picture the other day of me drinking wine. Why? I didn't have my pinky high enough up in the air. Oh, you need to stick it up very high. <laughs> Tom is the very top of the upper class, you've got to remember. So, like, his pinky is literally just above his head. I wouldn't <laughs> be surprised if he broke his pinky to just permanently stick out. It does. That's exactly how posh people work. You go to shake his hand and it's just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's quiet. <laughs> it's quite a fancy handshake. <laughs> I'm very impressed by how far your pinky is sticking out. So it's very cool. <laughs> that is quite a lovely pinky you've See, got there Eric right this is why you should never miss a week <laughs> oh yeah it will make fun she of you incessantly <laughs> does it do, does it matter which pinky it is like if it is is left pinky 
like lower well, class. If you're right if you're right handed, chances are you're probably not gonna use your left pinky. <laughs> Could you imagine drinking tea with your right <laughs> and then you just raise your left hand even higher with the pinky straight up in the air? It's just that's what's in Tom's room right now is just people with various pinkies in the air just drinking <laughs> Yeah, look at Boris over there. He's got his pinky quite high. To- Tom's is Tom's is right at the top because he's Horston, and Jeeves is just standing next to him putting volivons in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> now, guys, Alistair, where's your pinky? Mm, sorry, good sir. I'm shaking hands with Agnes. <laughs> And straight back over the air. <laughs> mm. So, so it won't happen again. Jeeves, hold my arm up. My pinky is tight. <laughs> yes, he just constructs a brace to keep his arm up with his pinky up. <laughs> oh, another factory sealed invention. <laughs> Alistair and uh, Agnes. Oh, man. Um, sorry. Please come back. <laughs> Tom, send us a picture. I want to get a picture of Tom's posh party. In reality, they're probably all really drunk and just unconscious on the floor, but with the pink, the, the pinky still in the air. I'm going to see if I can get Tom to send us a picture. Tom, we are making fun of you <laughs> and your British pinky on the show right now. Can you send us a picture? We should have just had him on anyway. Tom, just put the microphone on in the background. It's just, it's just here, a bunch of, mm, quiet, quiet. Yes, quiet. <laughs> Literally all posh people. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, if you're wondering, by the way, as well, Jess is not here either. Oh, yeah, that's right. She what, had can, can something come up. I don't know what, but she just wasn't able to make it. Probably have gone to the doctor's about a throw or something. Fortunately for her, this is a two-part show, so she can still technically show up next week and have the game beaten and have it count towards her perfect <laughs> twenty sixteen rate. But yeah, but like, this is kind of convenient that she's missing because I'm not convinced she started it yet. So maybe that was the problem. Yeah, I think it is. I'll fill you in later. <laughs> <laughs> is that from Yom? No. No, I asked him I actually asked him to send us a picture of your bash with everyone's pinky in the air. Oh, <laughs> uh, that would be so good. I'd I'd like to hear him try to explain that to everybody. Can you send us a picture of you, Bash, with everyone's pinky in the air? <laughs> Come on, Tom. I hope he gets it. Maybe I should have prefaced it with something a little nicer than we're making fun of you. No, I think he expects it. You know, if, you know, if you're not here for a week, get the best day. Like that time when my power cut out. <laughs> oh, God, we just lit into you. <laughs> we did, you did, yes. Well, that was the week that we had uh, Will on, right? No, that was a different week. We had a guest that week, didn't we? No, don't think so. I thought, yeah, well, whatever. So. That was beyond my control, though. Literally the entire street went down. Generators, Daniel. Well, get the, get the hand crank going again. Crystal, why have you stopped cranking? Crank it! Crank it! <laughs> Your neighbors, well, Crystal and Daniel are at it again. I don't think the mind. No, like paper, they like it. Paper. Th- oh God! Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stop on that. We will. Yes. So we were talking about amiibos before the show. We were. You're saying you that those are the very, collection. Well, I don't have quite the collection. I have a collection. I would. I don't even think it would classify as a collection. I have an assortment. Hmm. I have. See, they're not like I was saying to you before. They're not. As far as I'm aware, huge over here. I wonder why that is, because Mark Haddock was uh, talking to me the other day after I bought the Shovel Knight and Blue Yarn Yoshi, and he said that those are both in obvious abundance down in Australia, and even the giant Mega Yarn Yoshis, which here were a very limited release only at Toys R Us, people were standing in line, 
and you could only buy one, and they were sold out immediately. Really? And he said, I saw what I saw one of them in um, a shop near me the other day as well. He said down there they're just on the shelves everywhere. Yeah, it's crazy. I you don't because um, Skylanders of Disney Infinity kind of dominate the market. Those are huge so, here too. I mean, but, yeah. but Skylanders seems like it's more popular with the eight year old to twelve year old crowd, mm. and then and the, are popular with adults. <laughs> yeah. Because I think the that's... adults have a little bit more of a connection with the Nintendo characters, and that's why they like them a little more. Mm. But I've got a buddy who owns every single amiibo that's even that's ever come out, wow, even the ones that were only released in other territories. It's ridiculous how much he spent on those. Yeah, I can imagine. Well, and now they're starting to do amiibo Skylanders crossovers. Are they? So they've. They, I was at his house the other day, and he had the the Bowser Skylander crossover. So. It, there's a, there's a very distinct art style between Amiibo and Skylander, and they meshed those two art styles together, and it's actually pretty cool. It's a little much, though. It's like, okay, now we're just kind of milking it. See, over here at the moment, it's those um, pop vinyl figures are really popular. Pop? Do you get them? Oh, the uh, pop cap figures? Like no, they're the, the, like, like Batman and Superman. But they look like bobbleheads? Like... Yes. Yeah, pop cap. Is it pop cap? No, pop. They're called pop vinyl over here. Pop vinyl? Vinyl. Oh, vinyl. vinyl. Yes. Vinyl. Vinyl. Vinyl? Sounds like fennel, which is a <laughs> vegetable. I'm probably saying that wrong. <laughs> Just like Illinois? Illinois, yes. Isn't that a uh, humble, game that was made American by States. Rockstar about a detective? What? It's a joke, Dan. That's called word association. You're supposed to say no. I that literally was did, literally didn't hear what you said. No. <laughs> oh, I said, isn't that a game that was made by Rockstar about a detective in the 1940s? Yes, it is. It's called L.A. Noir. No, it's called Illinois. <laughs> Sequel. <laughs> Just walking around in its old barns and cornfields. <laughs> it's not really what it's like. It's not far from the truth. Illinois is a pretty boring place. Whenever we would drive south, we would do everything in our our power to not drive through Illinois. Mm. Christy and I drove from Wisconsin to Florida for a honeymoon. And the way down through Illinois, was it's fine. It's like, all right, cool. We're on our way to Florida. And everything was still all exciting. But on the way back, we hit Illinois. And like the whole mood in the car just tanked. Oh. Like we got six so- hours left of this garbage <laughs> if you listen and you're from illinois we do apologize well thankfully the winner we had to send the game to was not from illinois do they even have post there i think they drop it off at the missouri border and then they truck it in by horse All right. <laughs> so did you like illinois no absolutely not did you not no i thought it was not really quite. cool for what it accomplished at the time in terms of recognizing facial features but yeah as a whole man it was boring it looked good the game was all right i bought it It could have been so much more i bought it for 11 bucks on clearance so i got 11 dollars worth of entertainment out of it probably did the first case then with sub this Mm, i got to a part where i was able to park a car on some steps and got out and went well that was fun yeah pretty far eric it's about as far as Jess gets in most games. Well, I actually started the game. Actually, yeah, that's further than Jess. Yeah. So, no, back to the Amiibo thing for a second. I bought the Shovel Knight one. I'd completely forgotten that that came out. Oh, that's pretty cool. And I love Shovel Knight. When I was at uh, GameStop to pick it up, one of my buddies is really good friends with the store manager at the one by his house. And the Shovel Knight ones are... They're kind of hard to come across. I haven't seen any in the stores, so he had him hold one for me, and I walked in to pick it up, and they just happened to have one of the the blue yarn Yoshis, which is the only one I hadn't been able to find. So picked that one up as well, and well, that's a good. That's pre- a good. Pre-ordered myself a copy of the Mega Man Legacy Collection Collector's Edition for the 3DS, so I could get the gold plated Mario or a gold plated Mega Man Amiibo. Oh, Mario instead of Mega Man. How dare you? I know. 
How dare you, sir? How dare you make such a amateur slip? Ew, Tom with his <sighs> sticky out pinko would, finger would be disgusted. He would wiggle his pinky at me in disgust. Say, you are not <laughs> Yeah, quite. Enough. Quite. <laughs> mm. Mm. Rookie mm. mistake. So... Mm. Mm. But speaking of Mario from your slip up, mm. this week's game mm. is Paper Mario. You see, this show isn't just thrown together. You should see the script. Yeah, it's nothing. We basically just had Ellie mash on the keyboard, and that's her script. Mm. And then with Mario put in there somewhere. Yes. Daniel. So, yes. Hello. Hi. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? Mm, quite. quite good. Tell me about yeah. Paper Mario. Oh, well, Paper Mario, as you know, is an absolutely spiffy RPG for the Nintendo 64. So, as per our previous conversation, it's a shit RPG. Well, it's a simplistic RPG. I think I'd be even willing to go further than that. It's more than simplistic. If you Well, have... I actually read up on this, Eric, and the developers said that it was designed so people who are unfamiliar with RPGs can get into them. So I can appreciate that because I feel like the RPG is a it's got a pretty high barrier to entry. Oh god, yeah. Um I'm playing Xenoblade Chronicles X for the oh, Wii Jesus. U. Jesus. And uh my god, that game's complex. Not to not to sidetrack yet again, but that game I have an interest in that game and I don't think I will ever pick it up because I consider myself to be a pretty seasoned RPG person. I mean, it's it's yeah. one of my favorite genres. I've played hundreds of them multiple times. So I went over to a friend's house because he wanted to show it to me. And I actually, my eyes actually glazed over and I probably started drooling as he was explaining it to me because there's so much shit going on in there. I don't even think I could comprehend all of it. I don't think I've even scratched the surface because it starts off and it just kind of, there's not, there's a mini tutorial, but to be honest, it doesn't show you most of what you've got to do. Yeah. And you just well, and if you think the, through it. The crafting system in Rogue Galaxy was in depth. This one's even worse. Yeah, it's you can buy stuff. You can put data probes in places. The battle system's complex. You can learn arts. You can get new skills. You can upgrade your items. It's got and everything. Then there's just in this big overarching concept of an RTS over the top of it. Yeah, sort of. And then later on, you even get mechs which you can use in fights. No thanks. So. But it is, as the the world design is fantastic, because it's kind of, it is open world, but all the monsters and stuff roam around. So it's got a very them. Final Fantasy XV feel to it. Mm. But I think Final Fantasy XV, like, if it's like that, will be really good. Wait, you haven't played the XV demo, have you? I have not. Oh, oh Daniel. Oh, Eric. Oh, Do you Dan- think we'll actually see Final Fantasy XV this year? Uh, I think it's a possibility. If we do, it'll be holiday time because i think a couple months ago they said that the first half of the game was ready to publish i'm sure they said recently that it's finished but just they're doing player testing now they said the first half is finished oh, at 100 okay. percent. wow how many years have been it well it's gone through a lot of different development cycles because didn't it used to be versus, versus 13 30. yeah because it came out when they announced the whole agito 13 versus 13 and then Ajito rolled into Type Zero, and then they realized that Final Fantasy Thirteen was shit, so they just decided to make it fifteen. Mm, yeah, I wonder if Versus Thirteen had Lightning and the crew in there too, and they're like, "Yeah, fuck those people." Lightning was one of the worst characters. Oh yeah, she was not relatable even in the least. I mean, look at Final Fantasy Ten um, with not who who is the who is the lady in the black dress? Um, Lulu. Lulu. She was kind of a bitch, but you still could relate to her and you could understand her. And then in thir- or in ten two, you had Pain. I mean, Pain was just this super generic emo style girl, but you could still relate to her. She fit the mold. Lightning just sucked. Yeah, she did. I thought, but Square Enix keeps like using her for stuff. Like for example, this week, bizarrely, in a Louis Vuitton spread in a magazine, they use Lightning. I wasn't sure if that was real. It was real. What? I think. I think it was real. And then they made up like fake quotes for her and stuff. Like actual Louis Vuitton. Yeah. I can't believe that's real. Let's see if I can find a quote from her because it's just bizarre. 
Well, and then there was it wasn't there another one with Waluigi and Calvin Klein? <laughs> I think Venture Louis Beef Vuitton did this as a joke. With Final Fantasy's Lightning. All this time, I thought the only style that suited me was one that mirrored who I was, strong and tough, but I was wrong. Nicholas Jess Curry changed the way I see myself. Perhaps I'm finally learning who I truly am, Lightning. That can't be real, though. Why not? Well, I'm just like, I don't think Louis Vuitton, <laughs> like the other, the other quote, ow, my neck. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the picture. I, I don't think I'm this is, I, I honestly don't think it's real. It must be. I, no, I really don't believe this is In real. In a completely made up interview given exclusively to the UK's Telegraph. What? Wouldn't you? Yeah, wouldn't you choose Sarah because she was less annoying? <laughs> I think Lightning is one of the the prettiest Final Fantasy female characters. But she's but nobody likes her. <laughs> yeah, it just goes to show that you know. Most... I don't know. I think next gen Tifa on the Final Fantasy VII remake will give her a run for her money. Do you think they're gonna incorporate like ultra jiggly boob technology for her? I think it would be a missed opportunity if they didn't. I'm I'm hoping they don't change her too much because they pretty drastically changed how Barrett looked. Mm. Yeah, they did. Compared to Advent Children, he looks completely different as well, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. He looks too buff. Even Even Cloud looks different from Advent Children. He's still pretty similar. Mm, same hair and stuff, but... Hmm. I'm, I, wonder, I really want to see uh, Red 13. My God, I can't believe that Louis Vuitton actually did this. But where's the target market? You can't tell me most people who wear Louis Vuitton clothes play and know what Final Fantasy Thirteen is. Yeah, there's yeah. I the first time I ever walked into a Louis Vuitton store was in Vegas, and I went in there with my mom, and I just asked her like, "How much are these?" And she's like, "If you have to ask, you cannot afford it." Yeah. I find it's, that bizarre. It's the same I just, concept. I just, like, you if don't something see, doesn't have a price on, I assume it's free. <laughs> so. you, you don't see car commercials for Lamborghini because people who can afford Lamborghinis aren't sitting around watching TV. Nope. Actually, if you can afford that, you should be sitting around watching TV because you've got nothing else to do. <laughs> Hold on, Dan. I'm going to send you this link. This is still the, the lightning thing, but you have to scroll down to... Uh, what is it? The third picture. Does it look like she's backwards? Come on. One, two. Click, click on the link. What the hell? <laughs> it looks like she's backwards. Why is she wearing a cape that's not cape? It's a shoulder cape to keep your shoulders dry. Oh, handy. Yeah. I've often thought to myself when it's raining, and I need a shoulder cape. <laughs> it's like an umbrella that you wear over your shoulders. <laughs> what the hell? Fashion is stupid. <laughs> I mean, the picture above it's not too bad. She looks like she's ready to uh, either put on a Michael Jackson impersonator show or invade a small country. Yeah. How did, we, how did we get here? I don't know. We're talking about amiibos and something happened. I can't even like I can't even backtrack. Xenoblade, Xenoblade Chronicles X, Final Fantasy Fifteen, Final Fantasy Thirteen, <laughs> Lightning Bean and Louis Vuitton. That's how we got there. Wearing shoulder capes. Wearing shoulder capes. Yes. Oh Jesus. <laughs> I used to teach a lesson when I taught writing about stream of consciousness, and that conversation would have perfectly fit the mold of stream of consciousness. I think that, particularly me and you, when we're alone and just talking, it's, this is what happens all the time. The internet's a dangerous place. It is. You get into some dark territory real quick. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget the Tomb Raider episode. Oh, God. Don't bring it up again. <laughs> Let's go back to Mario. Mario. And let's talk about some very generic, simplistic 
entry level RPG. But you say that, but do you find it unenjoyable? No, not at all. It's it's got a very Nintendo feel to it. It's like this is great. Nintendo took an RPG and made it really cute. Yeah, but what I like about it is it kind of delves more into Mario's world because you don't see that a lot. Well, they've they've like, done that. This isn't the first game that did that, though. I know. Of course, the Super Mario RPG before this. Yep. Which is kind, it's kind of a spiritual sequel. It is. It's got a lot of the same sound effects, a lot of the same elements to it. I did like Mario RPG a little better, though, because it is a more mm. traditional RPG. I see. I dabbled with our Super Mario RPG, but I haven't played it all the way through. I don't Are you think. serious? No. Oh, Smithy is such a good villain. I've played quite a bit of it, but it was a long time ago, and I can't remember it. It's a so, pretty long game, too, from what I remember. Yeah. But I was talking to you about this yesterday as well. Super Mario, no, Paper Mario is quite long, too. This one will be about 24 hours. Mm. I mean, I'm up to star number three, and I feel like I've been playing quite a while, and it looks like there's eight to get. Well, the game is broken down in a traditional Mario fashion. I, that's That's what I really like, is they kept a lot of those same elements, where a typical Mario game, you have seven worlds, maybe eight and then a main objective within each world to either beat the castle or get the star for that world. And this is, they took that that concept and plugged it into an RPG. Um, but each star takes about two and a half hours. Mm. You have to go through very, very simple dungeons to get them. So what's the story, Daniel? Give us, give us the Paper Mario story in a nutshell. Mm, well, it's basically the same as any other Mario game. Bowser steals the princess. And uh, but, but in, the, that, in this one, in this one, Bowser has gone to a place called the Star Road. Yes, Star, Star Road? Heaven Haven. Star Haven. Yes, and he's nicked this item called the Star Rod, which grants the wishes of people. Usually, the stars of Star Haven use the Star Rod to grant wishes, but because Bowser's stole it, he is now all powerful and he can do what he wants because he used it basically. to make himself invincible. He did so, and then he brings his kind of float in castle and takes princess's castle princess peach's well, castle built, away somehow his castle gets underground beneath yeah that, that was that was bizarre where did that come from he's just i'm gonna move my castle underground and just leaves activate the drill well it's actually not even his castle it's one of those smiling floating ufos Clown things yeah that, yeah that he was in at the end of super mario world yeah so maybe he built it under her castle and nobody noticed. Not very perceptive, are they? Yeah, they're the Mushroom Kingdom. They're all high on mushrooms. And anyway, Mario goes to rescue the princess from the castle, and Bowser, because he's all powerful, basically just completely destroys Mario, knocks him out of the castle, and then you're off on a quest to recover the star spirits to get the power to defeat B- Bowser. Yes? That is the story. That is the story. <laughs> Good succinct summary thank you i've been working on it do you really have it written out no no (laughs) not at all that's just why what just came from my mind oh man your mind is firing on all cylinders today you sure you got enough left in the tank to make it to the end of the show probably not i'll probably be a drooling simple (laughs) (laughs) quiet just be you talking to yourself (laughs) It wouldn't be the first time. No, it wouldn't. Definitely not. I mean, two-man shows work, but I don't think I could pull a one-man show. You should be able to. You should be a better host, really. I should. I should probably stop being such a toilet. You should. (laughs) We've been telling you this for years. (laughs) Quit being such shit. (laughs) So the, the game itself functions like a traditional Mario game, in that it is side-scrolling 2D. But well, instead of jumping on enemies and killing them, it activates a... Well, it's, it's not 2D, it's 3D. Kind of. 2.5D is there the you go. Yeah. accepted term, I believe. You go from left to right, and the world sometimes rotates to give you that perception of 3D. It is a 2D side-scrolling game. Okay. Because and it's made of paper. It's flat. It's a th- yeah. it's a three D world that functions like a two D side scroller. 
How's See, that? I'm interested in why they decided to have the paper concept. It's very odd. I think it's that's kind of why I like Nintendo is that they're just innovating and putting goofy stuff in. Like, why did they do Super Mario Galaxy where everything's on a round planet? Yeah, well, that's why I like Nintendo's games because they do when they do a really good game like a Zelda or something like that. It's always different. Well, like Yoshi's Woolly World. Why did they make mm-hmm. everything out of yarn? The latest Kirby, everything's made out of clay. I think it just they're gonna lends run, They're going to run out of materials. I think it just lends to some really cool design elements within the game. Yeah. Like, like, I, what I liked about Paper Mario is when he goes to sleep and he goes flat. He just slips under the covers. Yeah. He, with him, one of your characters inside him, which is just odd. Ooh. Well, he folds him up like little origami and stuffs him in his pocket. Yes, I think that's exactly what happens. Fire would be a very large concern in this universe, wouldn't it? And there is fire attacks. I feel like that would just be... If you could master fire, you would rule the universe. Yeah, I think that would probably happen. Huh. Bowser has a fire attack, doesn't he? Yes. And, and there's be... fire flowers which you can use. That's an oversight. They should go back to the drawing board. It must be coated in fireproof or stuff or something. Ah, it's flame retardant paper. It is, yes. Got it. All right. Um, how do you want to go through this? Uh, I think we need to gr- talk about the battle system before we get into in depth. Yes. Tell me about the battle system, Dan. Why don't you tell me about the battle system? I did the synopsis. But it's your game. <laughs> it doesn't mean I have to say everything. Okay, fine. Um, so it's a it's a traditional style menu, almost menu based battle system. Uh, your characters on the left, enemies are on the right. You have very basic attacks. You have your if you're Mario, you just have your jump. You have a, a hammer, and then within that, you can get badges that you can collect throughout the world that give you different abilities within battle. So you could have something like the charge attack for your hammer. Um, you could get extra HP or, or something that aids you in battle. But it's just basic Mario attacks, then his his partner attacks, oh, and then the enemies attack, and then it's just back and forth. Um, pretty pretty simple battle system. It is simple, but you've still got to think about what you're doing. Oh, absolutely, especially later in the game once you get bow. Holy cow. Yeah. Things change dramatically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really like the badge system, to be honest. I think it's it's a little underplayed. Um, they could have done a little well, bit more with it, but it actually you actually do have to be thinking about what badges you have on as you mm-hmm. go into specific battles, because when you level up, uh, as you kill enemies, you get star points, and then once you collect a hundred star points, you level up, and you can put uh, your level up into either HP flower points, or badges. And flower points are used to use special moves, by the way. Correct. We didn't touch on. HP is obviously health. You start off with a whopping 10, and most attacks do one, so you're not going to be dealing your 9,999 anytime soon. No. But um, the badges, they don't just... You can't... I don't think you can buy them. No, you, there is one store you can buy them, but most of the good ones you just find laying around or they're hidden throughout the world. But um, there's a section in the game where there are a bunch of enemies that have spiked shells. And you see all the enemies on the main map, but if you if they hit you first, they get first strike. But if you jump on them, you get first strike. So one of the badges is allows you to jump on spiked shells. So naturally, if Mario jumps on a spiked shell, it's going to hurt him instead of the enemy. But a badge gives you the power, gives you the ability to overcome that. Yeah, there's ones that like increase your HP and FP and stuff like that. And, but with the leveling up system, I said this to you again the other day, and it, it takes so long to level up. And it's so easy to avoid the enemies. I've gotten to spots where I'm like, man, I am severely underleveled for this. Yeah. I've been trying to fight all enemies that I come across, but you're talking sometimes you get like two or one star point per enemy and you need a hundred to level up. Yep. So, well, what's... and then, then again, you've got, when you level up, you've got the decision of which one do you focus on? 
What have you been dumping your points into? I have been going through a system where I do each one as I level up. Really? So I've got HP, FP, badges, HP, FP, badges. See, I went HP a couple times. I've only dumped one into ba- into flower, and then I've dumped like three into badges because you can put badges on that make up that difference for the HP and flower power. So you can actually get higher health points and, and flower points at the beginning by dumping into badges. Yeah, you can, but I figured this way I'm pretty balanced. I wonder so, if that's going to come back to bite you later. I don't know. It's getting harder. Yeah. As you go along. To... The it's the the only other complaint that I have about the battle system is that you are limited to ten items. Mm-hmm. Oh, the items are pain in the ass. Yeah, ten. It's so you do have to be a little selective of how often you fight, or if you are just going to go out and level grind, you have to stay near town or near. Uh, occasionally they'll have save boxes and, and typically around the save box is a heart box that will replenish all of your health and flower points. So if you are going to level or grind, make sure you're either near town where you can buy items or around one of these heart boxes, because as enemies hit you, you have to use this health. You can't use, there, there is a star power called focus that I guess we forgot to talk about. Uh, I never used that once as you collect these stars you get new star powers. And one of them is focus, um, where you can actually skip a turn, but it increases your star power. So you to use these skills, it uses star power. So you can basically refill it on your own. Uh, another one is refresh, which gives you 5 HP, 5 FP, but it uses a full star. So that one's actually saved my bacon a few times. Mm, I think that's not enough health. Well, the enemy the enemies start like later on doing six and stuff like that. Six so damage. without jumping too far ahead, Bo has a skill that makes you invisible. Uh huh. So what I'll do is I'll cast refresh on myself, and then Bo oh, will have right, her yeah. make me invisible, and then next turn I'll do refresh again and have her make me invisible. So you can slowly fill your health up that way. See that that's interesting though because like it is a simplistic battle system, but like I said before, you do have to think about these things. Well, and it's it's really cool. They do give you party members, and they're not Nintendo main characters, which I think is interesting because you always view the Koopas, the Goombas, um, the Lakitus, and all those other, you know, the bomb bombs the, the Bullet yeah. Bills. You view them all as enemies. But in this game, they all exist within the world, and Bowser has recruited certain ones to be part of his army, and they're the bad ones. So the first town you come across is a Goomba town and it's this family of Goombas and you meet this little uh, this little boy named Goombario who wants to go on an adventure with Mario so he becomes one of your partners and he's got special skills like head stomp um I don't remember what his power skill is his tattle which tells it's basically like Libra from oh. Final Fantasy tells you the enemy's weaknesses and their health and stuff I don't think I've used that at all <laughs> I use it occasionally there's a stupid enemy which uh, I couldn't figure out how you hurt I do like the I do like the concept of the different uh, sidekicks that you can get. So so far, I have Goombario, um, Co- who's who's Co- Co- Cooper? Koopa? Cooper Cooper the Koopa, uh, Bombat, uh, Paracarry, yeah, and Bo. I think we're about the same point. You just finished the third star, right? Just finished the third star. Yeah, I'm exactly the same place as you. That's where I stopped. So it's it's, it's cool how the, the levels progress because there's a pretty common flow to how each chapter goes. You start off going to either a town or a location and you have to help those people there solve a problem. Once you solve the problem for them, then you can move on to the actual meat of that chapter, getting into the castle or someone who is terrorizing this town um but along the way you enter an, you you encounter an obstacle that you can't overcome so you have to find this new sidekick who can join you and overcome it like in the castle where you meet uh bombat you get dropped into this cage she becomes your partner the only way out is to blow a hole in the wall or as you're going up the rugged mo- the the rugged mountain there's a gap you can't cross 
and Paracary is there, and he's lost all these letters. So you collect letters for him, he becomes your partner, and he can carry you across small distances. Very, very small distances. Yeah, there's there are times where it's like, okay, they made that cut it just a little close like it was down to the part where you have to be on the edge yeah like get to carry right it there <laughs> it's the, the 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 sidekick system is cool and you can they each have their own special skill that they can use on the world map that you can activate by pressing down c so Cooper, are you finding that really janky on the wii u remote by the way the wii u gamepad i use the classic controller oh dear yeah uh, I'm using the gamepad, and every time it usually opens the item menu or so the party menu. Are you playing on the pro controller or like the big gamepad? The big gamepad. Okay, because I'm playing on the original Wii. I forgot that I would purchased it for the Wii Virtual Console years ago. Oh, right. So you're playing it on Wii U. I'm playing it on Wii, but um, it's a good emulation of it. Uh, the The main... I've I've accidentally used some pretty important items. So on the main map, you can press the different C buttons to either change your character, open the item menu, or activate your partner's special skill. And sometimes mm-hmm. I've hit the menu item. Yep. And then accidentally I used press... a super shroom the other day, which oh. gives you ten health. <laughs> I was like, oh no! I used one I of the full, um, health, full health as well. I don't remember what it was, but it was one of those that gives you twenty five each. You get yep. them on the rugged mountain. The whacker thing, yeah, the whacker, whacker balls or whack a moles or yeah. something like that. It, I was pissed to the point where I actually reset. I'm like, you know what? It's only been 15 minutes since my last save. I'm gonna reset because I need that. I had I had to reset because in uh, Toad Town, there's this shady looking guy, and he says for a certain amount of money he'll upgrade one of your skills, mm-hmm. which he does. But then after you've done it, he goes, "Oh, one of your other ones will have gone down." By the way, so I went down from like 25 FP to 10. Ugh. And so I was like, no way. <laughs> basically, he upgraded one and axed the completely other. Completely neutered the other, basically. That's not worth it. No, not at all. And I was like, I'm going to have to restart here. Thankfully, I, I just saved. So I really enjoy the towns that are in this game. They did a great job of making this world feel alive. Uh, one of the staples of an RPG is going into a town and talking to people and just having that sense of there's something happening here. These people have yeah. lives, there's interactions, there's conversations, there's opinions. That's what's lacking for most Mario games, though, isn't it? It's kind of, there's not really much depth to it. But there is a lot of depth, like, even it goes into what motivates Bowser Yeah, to do what he does and stuff like that. Which is pretty generic. I mean, it's he wants Peach to like him and he wants to beat Mario. Yeah, but I, I think it might go even more in depth later on. Yeah, it could. So we'll see how it goes. Um. Hmm. I forgot what we were talking about before that. Oh, the, 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 the partner skills. Yes. So like Cooper, uh, he has a skill where if you see an item on a different side of a gap and before you had paracarry, you can use Cooper to kick out his shell and hit certain items. Like if there's a switch on the other side of a river or there's an item on the other side of a gap you want to collect, you can grab those using him. Um, Bombat blows things up. Uh, paracarry carries you. What does Goombario do? Goombario's skill is used as like a reminder to try and nudge you in the right direction. Oh, that so would have been it's... super helpful. Because <laughs> I almost when... made a, f- I almost made a really big mistake um, towards the end of the third star, but it was just the path that I needed to go was just outside to the right of the building, but I started to walk back through the forest and then I stopped and oh, went, God. maybe I should just explore that whole area and found that, that path. Cause I did not want to go through the forest again. No, the forest is a bit of a pain. So we start off the, the first area that you have to go through is just, um, what is the first one? Well, it's the Goomba village, isn't it? And you fall off a veranda, and then it teaches the basic mechanics. Yes, the battle system. But just like the, oh, where do you get the first star from? I forgot. Uh, oh God! <laughs> it is oh the Koopa Fortress. Yes, the Koopa Bros, who are just a blatant ripoff of the Ninja Turtles. No, oh, they are so are uh, just an they're even the same colors. Obvious rip, and this one's pretty simplistic. Um, I mean, we don't need to go through through all of it, but yeah, basically Bowser has 
recruited different bosses to to hide or protect these stars. And the Correct. first one is the Koopa Brothers. And they are shit. They are shit. But you walk out with Bombat and Cooper in the same time. Yeah, you do, don't you? I really liked that. The, there was a really cool scene at the top of the Koopa Fortress where you're jumping over the bullet bills. Yeah. that was To me, that was a really cool homage to those old Mario levels where you do have the bullet bills coming at you. And if you get into mm-hmm. the battles, man, those bullet bills can hit hard. They can. You also have to fight the cannons at the end, don't you? Yes. Yes, you do. And then the yeah. Cooper brothers were the uh they, they were in that gigantic Bowser um costume. Yeah. Bowser got all he's he's all super excited. He's like, That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> that was pretty funny. None of the boss what? battles were super difficult. This one was probably one of the more difficult ones because there's four of them and if you hadn't really saved up some of your items i usually will try not to use any of my items before i get to the boss just because i need them i think one of the things we haven't actually touched on is that uh, as you get through the game you get kind of battle modifiers don't you which we like extra skills you can use you know when you can say for example mario if you type it if you Press A when Mario jumps on the head of someone. Oh, he does yeah. another jump, and you get a, you get a second attack. I feel like that's not really well timed because going back to Mario RPG, that was just something that was included, kind of like the right. whole hitting R one in Final Fantasy VIII to do that extra attack. Oh yeah, the trigger attack thing. Yep. It's they make it sound like okay, press A right before you hit, but if you watch the button, the button presses when he's at the 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 apex of his jump. It's not right before he hits. I didn't think there was even a button that showed you. Yeah, there's a there's an on-screen button. Is there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Didn't notice. I'm pretty good at timing it, to be honest. You I can don't... also, when Mario gets attacked, you can also press A at the right moment, and it deflects some of the damage. That's pretty hard to pull off. It is quite hard to pull off. Especially if the enemies are, are a fast-attacking enemy. Uh-huh. The, the easiest ones are the Goombas. Oh, yeah, cause... they do their little head bop. Yeah, and you can see them coming, but some of them, some of them kind of come towards you, then pull back, and then come towards you. So you're like, "Oh God!" I think my favorite battle modifier is for Paracarry when he does his his um, slingshot or his aim shot. Oh, when you the scrolling bar and you have to aim it right. Yeah, it's just because yeah, it's, it's pretty... so powerful. Which character do you use the most? I cycle through all of them pretty evenly. My favorite to use in battle is uh, Cooper. Because I use he, Cooper all the time. He's got that ability to hit all the enemies on the screen if they're on the ground. Yeah. So I'll use him. I, as of now, I'm switching between him and Bo quite consistently. I assume you found the um, power blocks. I was just going to bring that up, too. I've only found four of them. I found four, too. So I think we must be about right. Let me I'm guess. The only one you Goom- didn't upgrade was Goombario? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Goombario. You're kind of shit. He is a bit shit, yes. He's cute. I mean, you keep him around because he's like a little kid. And you're like, eh, I don't feel yeah. like breaking his spirit. But now yet. that I've got Bo, I've used her more. Because her attack does five damage. Yeah. Hers, I didn't understand her battle modifier at first because I just saw the stick down there wiggling, so I'm wiggling it back and forth. And then Christy was just like, you didn't do very good there. Like, well, no shit, thanks. <laughs> so next time I did it, I actually read what I was supposed to do and you just have to press it to the left. Yeah, loads of times. Yeah. I don't know I don't know if it's a limitation of the Wii U gamepad, but the ones where you have to hammer A don't work very well. Uh, which one is that? So that's the that's Bo's standard attack, correct? The slap? No, that's the one when you have to do it to the left. But Bombette's one when she explodes, oh, you yeah. kind of have you have to hammer A, and mm-hmm. it doesn't work very well. I can't. All. I struggle to get it up to a hundred percent. Yeah, I don't know why. I also found it when you have to crank the gramophone in the Boo's mansion, and you do that as well. That was, didn't work brilliantly. Well, actually, it took me a while to figure out that you have to do it to r- the rhythm of the music. I was just going to say that that wasn't just hammering A. That was rhythm. And yeah. then I just kept doing it because I was expecting something to happen. I'm like, okay, I'm tired of doing this. 
Yeah, no. so I stopped and I'm like, oh, okay, he's still dancing. Mm-hmm. Um, We're getting ahead of ourselves. We again. are. But after you get that first star, I really like how they incorporate the concept of an intermission because the whole thing kind of does play out like a little bit of a play because it's broken into chapters and then they, they have a little stage between hands and it, it just kind of lends itself to that whole this is a play feel. But there, mm-hmm. there's a little intermission in between each chapter where you take over control of Princess and Princess is approached by this tiny star called Twink. And Twink is, he was just called up to Starhaven a couple days beforehand, so he can't really grant large wishes yet because she's like, oh, hey, get me out of here or let's beat Bowser. And he's like, well, let's try something a little simpler. And basically the only wish he can grant is to pass information along to Mario. So as Princess in the castle, you kind of can sneak around and eavesdrop on the guards or on Bowser and, and learn where Mario is supposed to go next, and then you pass that information along to Twink, who takes it to Mario. Yes. I think that's a pretty cool little concept. It's pretty good. I mean, it's, it's Peach is very limited by what you can do. I didn't but... like the the stealth, the the intermission between two and three, where it's like, oh, you got to sneak around. Like this, this I'd say they only caught me once, so I wasn't too bothered. They caught me once, too, and then I went, oh, I don't feel like doing this. It's all right. But as you progress through those as well, you can also start finding badges for Mario. Yeah. And then you put them in a chest, which I haven't found the chest. The chest's like a two-way system, so there's another chest somewhere in the world where Mario can access and get these badges, but I haven't found it yet. Huh. So There are also star pieces, too, that we haven't talked about. You can collect these star pieces that you can s- oh, yeah. trade in uh, for badges. Yes, There's a can. shopkeeper who... Sells. I've only been to visit him once because I can't be asked to go back up there. There's not a very good travel system in this. Well, you say this, but have you been to the sewers in Toad Town? I have, but I thought it was like a casino. No. If you go after you get the stone hammer, which lets you destroy the stone blocks. Oh. You can go further in, and then there are wall pipes to different parts of the world. Okay, because that explains a, a a patch of ground that I saw outside of Bo's yes, mansion. Yes, those are the wall pipes. Wall oh, pipes. Because I sat there, I'm like, well, maybe wonder how they will get this to pop up. But there are some quite strong enemies down there. So. Oh, okay. So it's not just pop up and then like you get you get attacked by one of the squid things. What what are they called? Squids. I don't know. Do they have a name? Squid. Okay, squids. I don't know. <laughs> Let's look. Blooper. Bloopers, yes. Interesting. That that one was quite strong. So if you go down there, you can find warp pipes to get to different parts of the world, but there's only three open so far. So maybe you get other other skills as you go along to unlock more stuff down there. I don't know. Did you get frustrated with the uh, desert level? No, not at all. Dry, dry desert? No. But you said you did, so I'm intrigued where you struggled. I didn't struggle. I just got annoyed. I'm not a big fan of maps that make things super confusing just for the sake of making them confusing. So the desert has a main path that runs through it, and then it can branch up or down. And then once you go down, each of those has one that can go up, down, left, or right, and then another level that goes down. So I think it's like a 12 by... It's quite easy to figure out, though, because it's just a big square. Yeah, so, it is, but within each of those levels, you have those those cactuses that chase you, and then you've got the 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 thieves that run after you, and it's just it's it's a lot. Yeah, it was kind of annoying, but I kind of avoided most of the enemies. I think. I think I did too. So, and then you've got to you've got to try to find out who this Mustafa guy is, and you have to go to the store and buy a hammer and a shroom in a specific order. And that shows Mustafa that you're one of his friends and find out that the guy who's feeding you information is actually Mustafa himself. Mm-hmm. Gives then you he gives you a gem, which you can use to get through the desert and find dry, dry ruins. I enjoyed dry, dry ruins. I thought that one was really cool. Yeah. I don't, the way like finding keys and stuff reminds me of Zelda in a way. Yeah, but just, it it was such a well laid out dungeon. I yeah. just I did not like the blue cactus because they poisoned you instantly. Did that? 
Yeah, I avoided all of it. Well, the only three that I fought were the the three that you had to fight to open up the the room. Mm. I didn't notice that. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were didn't poison me. Who was the boss in this level? It was that guy who was dressed like a pharaoh. Oh, two tank Koopa. Yeah. <laughs> he summons chain chomps to attack you. He and was a fun himself. boss. I liked him. It was quite difficult, though. There was. I, I didn't know whether to focus on attacking him or the chain chomps. So I that's the one where I threw a badge on Mario for his quake hammer. Mm -hmm. And I just kept using quake hammer. And then I had Paracarry with me. And Paracarry would do his fly attack on All right, yeah. Tutan Koopa. So oh, usually idea. usually the character that you get leading up to the castle is the best one to use for that boss. Mm. Makes wonder, sense. Surely there's not a character for every single star, though, so... Uh, I don't know. I'm intrigued whether there's, like, better than the super blocks, so you can upgrade them again. There must be. Yeah, it seems like there should be, because they you're upgraded to full capacity pretty early in the game. Like Mario, gradually, I wasn't sure if Mario got upgraded, but eventually you get new boots and yep. a new hammer so you can increase your attack power and stuff, which I was quite thankful for because the green the, boots. Mario's, Mario's boots also give him a stomp attack in the world so you can get to new places. It's like his butt bomb from Mario 64. Yeah. Oh, I like that, though. It surprises me occasionally with new stuff. Uh, the next level, chapter three, with the invincible Tubba Blubba. Yeah, I like that. He was pretty cool. I, for as much as I don't like those, uh, forest type levels, think back to the Zelda games where you walk in and it's like, okay, uh, you, you got to go this direction, and if you go the wrong way, it takes you back to the beginning. This is like that, only bigger. So you walk in, and it's this circular area that has four exits on each side. Mm -hmm. And they, the only clue they give you is look at the surroundings near each exit and the correct exit, something will be different. So one of the exits has a tree trunk that has glowing eyes. Um, another one will have four flowers instead of three. So it's kind of cool how they went about doing that, but still it's frustrating because there's like nine or ten areas that you have to get through. And there are actually a couple that you can branch off, not the correct direction, and get uh, badges, a flower badge and an HP badge. I missed that. I didn't see them. Yeah. Uh, I missed them. So I went and got those. Did you get the bulbub? Or the, no. bu the bubble? Because there's the... I've got, one, I've got one somewhere else, but not there. There's one in the, the forest, and you take that back to the lady in Toad Town. Ah, uh, so I'm going to have to go back to the forest. I should be right next to it, though, because I just finished the third star, which is next to there. So Yeah, there are three things to get in there. You've got the FP badge, HP badge, and then the bubble. All right, okay. But go you'll check definitely it out. want those. Um, but yeah, once you work your way through, you end up at Bo's Mansion, which I liked Bo's Mansion. I thought her little lead up to the, the, the boss level was pretty fun. I like that, though, because it, it kind of it was different. It wasn't about fighting enemies anymore. It was more kind of solving some pretty simple puzzles, but I liked the change of pace. Well, it felt like the ghost mansions from yeah. the old Super Mario World. It wasn't... I liked it when, I liked it when the booze um, kind of... When they just would pull faces and stuff like that. I thought that was pretty cool. Or they would hide those objects and you'd have to find them. Yeah. It's, it was pretty cool. And then did you find the um, the pot that if you jumped into, you'd pop out as 8-Bit Mario? Yeah, what was the point of that? I, I think what that was was to teach you the beat for the song that you ah, had used the record on. Okay, that would make sense. It didn't seem to have any other purpose. Nope. Still cool, though. I really like <laughs> I like the... Uh, I sent you guys a a message about Bootler the Butler. Just yeah, that was funny. How I generic laughed at that of a too. name! It was really good though, because obviously the booze and I just it's all was really good. Pretty slapstick name stuff, but it's it's cool. Uh, I I I said to you earlier in the week. Do you not get like occasionally, not all the time, but some of the stuff there's a sexual vibe to it. See, I'm I don't. Sorry. Pick, I didn't pick that up. Even since did you, you see that, that picture, I did you see that picture I posted yesterday? 
yeah. today. Yeah. Well, it says Mario at the start goes to visit Princess Peach, and she says, "Nobody will bother us here. Should we relax and chat, just the two of us?" Uh, I think that could go either way. Hmm. Suspicious. Suspicious. <laughs> Maybe you're seeing what you want to see. Maybe I am, but I don't know. Uh, what's so after you? So Tubba Blubba is eating ghosts from this ghost town, mm-hmm. and apparently he's invincible, but he has a secret Ooh. to his invincibility. And you convince, or Bo insists on going with you because she's the only one who can get you past where you need to go. Because well, her actually, skill, what? Bo actually has one of the star spirits captured. And she says she'll oh, give yeah. you it if she you blackmails help. him. Yeah, she does. <laughs> That's some dark shit, Mario. Mario doesn't care. He doesn't say anything. No, just... it's like all right, whatever. <laughs> yep. Instead of saying, "How about I just beat you up and take it?" Mm. But Mario's a nice guy. He wants to help out. He does. Um, but no, her skill is is probably one of the most useful in the game to this point. Uh, mm. She has a skill called Out of Sight, which allows her to make you invisible and enemy attacks will pass through you. But it also works on the world map, too, where uh, once you get into Tubba Blubba's Fortress, there are these enemies that are very similar to the hands from Zelda that drop down, pick you up, and kick you back out to the beginning. So once they lock on to you and they're about to drop down, if you activate her out of sight, they'll lose you. And then you can Correct. continue on your way. There were a lot of super tough enemies in this castle. Oh, yeah. The um, things with the spears. Yeah, I didn't fight any that I didn't absolutely have to. I fought them all. Oh, God. They're not particularly tough, but they come in like groups of four, and they always hit for four HP. Yeah. And I'm only at unless 25. You, unless you do the block attack thing. Which is still, it's going to do two. So either way, every round, you're going to lose 8 HP minimum. Yeah, which is a lot, because considering you've probably only got about 30, and you're not really in a position to heal, because you've only got 10 items. Yeah, and the nearest so. health block in this castle is all the way on the left and three stories down, where the the final boss is all the way back up, all the way to the right, and three stories up. Yeah. But once you beat the enemies, they're gone, right? Or do yeah, they, they respawn? Don't, I don't know if they respawn if you leave the area, but they don't If you stay usually. in the castle. Yeah. Hmm. I um, think. Apparently there is some secret world, or some secret rooms in this... Oh, I need to go back. I'm looking at a... I'm looking at one of the the maps of Tubba Blubba's castle. Uh-huh. And there's a hallway that doesn't really have any indication, but if you blow bob up there, or Bombette, you can get yep. a, a D-down jump badge. Oh, I think I've got that. Oh, you have to get rid of one of the clubbas. No wonder I didn't see it. So after you get the butt stomp in that bit, they said you could knock a certain bit of the floor... Yeah. And find an How does that work? Because I could not get that to work. Well, the any of the floor that has board over it, you can knock that board out. No, there's there's a room where you first get it where there's a boo. And if you talk to him, he says, there's an item hidden in this room. And then if you butt stomp on the floor in a certain area, kind of a raised bit like jumps out. Huh. But I can't figure out how you get it out. I need to go like, back cause, here because there there's a couple big items that i missed there's a mega rush badge too oh i've never seen that one yeah apparently you know the room that has the once you go upstairs there's a room with a big grandfather clock Mm -hmm. apparently you can push that clock out of the way i knew that looked suspicious i tried to push it from the right and you have to push it from the left oh that's just annoying (laughs) yeah and then yeah uh did you accidentally get caught by tubba blubba when you walked into the hallway no. Oh, I got caught by him the first time, and he almost killed me. Do you get into a fight with him? Yeah, and you have to run away. But when you try yeah. to run away from the battle, your partner automatically makes it out. But you have to mash A, and there's this this bar that fills up. But there's mm-hmm. also a meter that flicks back and forth. And usually, 
in most basic enemies, it always lands on the far left where you've already filled up. But I think it took me seven tries before I could escape from battle with him. And oh, by God. then I'd burned through all of my items just staying alive because I hadn't saved in a while. Yeah. So I finally got away and then I had to backtrack all the way down to the heart again, avoiding all the clubbers. Oh, God. And See, then, the save points are few and far between as well. Yeah, so after I did that, I went outside, saved, came back in, which had respawned all the enemies, I think, at that point. But I made it back upstairs, got past Tubba Blubba, and then you go into that room where he's hiding his key, and there's like 15 clubbas there. Yeah. Did you get caught by any of them? I fought them all. You fought all 15 of the clubbas in there? Yeah. Why? Because I want the experience. Oh my god, I ran through all of them. This is why you've, you're under-leveled, because you're running past enemies. Rule one of RPGs is if you don't necessarily have to, don't run from a battle. Uh, see, I had to because I didn't have items, and I didn't want to backtrack all the way down again. Well, if you hadn't run from enemies in the past, you would be strong enough to cope. What are you doing for average damage right now? Uh, Four with the hammer. Four with the jump attack. Is that if you hit the action and double it? Yeah. Okay, see, we're doing the exact same then. Yeah, but you you must be have less HP or something. I think I've only got 25. I think I'm up to 30. Oh. I think I've only got 15 flower points, though. I've got about 25 flower points or something. So once you get through all these clubbers, you get a key that takes you into Tubba Blubba's room. And in Tubba Blubba's room, you find a chest that has another talking key in it that opens up a windmill that you passed on your way to here. So I have to backtrack all the way out, avoiding all the enemies again. But Tubba Blubba no, starts Tubba... chasing you. Yeah, I like that bit. That was quite tense. I wonder if he can actually catch you. He probably can. Hmm. Uh, you get out there and you find that the secret to his invincibility is that he does not have a heart. His heart is in the basement of this windmill, and his heart is the one that's controlling Tubba Blubba. Correct. And this is a pretty easy fight, I think. Yeah, well, it's, the, the heart was really easy. Then you, after that, you fight him outside, and it was even easier. Because he only had 10 HP, which I thought was cool, because by this point, I had burned through all of my items. I had nothing. And I was yeah. walking out of this battle with, like, 6 HP, and I saw Tubba Blubba and went, fuck. And I just said, well, let's give it my best crack. And it took two attacks and he was dead. Yep. Which I, was I thought really was pretty cool. By that. I thought it was really cool because they they built him up to be this invincible guy, but then you defeated what was making him invincible and he just turns out to be this really big wuss. And then he kind of starts crying and you find out that the booze pick on him, really. Because <laughs> he's just this big old insensitive dude or big old sensitive yep. guy. Oh, bless him. Oh, poor Tobo Blobo. And that's about as far as I went. I did a little bit of the next chapter. Um, did you start that one at all? I have not started. So There's I'm a very, with... very difficult fight with Junior Troopa. Is there? Yeah. I oh, almost he's died he's really right away. Easy, usually. I almost died right away. Yeah. It took quite a while. So that's where we'll stop with that. But uh, I think overall I'm really enjoying it. I'm looking forward to the rest of it. The only paper mario experience that i have was with super paper mario and then paper mario sticker star for the 3ds i loved the one on the wii which one was oh, that super, super paper mario was so good that was such a good game because you could flip it to a 3d world and instead of going side scrolling the camera would rotate and you could see down the 2d so clever so so clever it just it, it made for a lot of really cool puzzles it kind of builds upon the foundation of this one doesn't it yeah was, did that have the similar battle system to this one? I can't remember. Exactly the same. All the all really? of them did. This, the only one that was majorly different was Sticker Star, where you had to collect stickers and then use stickers to attack. And I didn't, I didn't like that. Mm. But there is another Paper Mario coming out next month called Paper Jam for the 3DS. Oh, I should have made it for Wii U. Uh, I know. The Wii U is not really getting much love. It's such a, a good console, though. It's such a sh it's such a shame. Well, that now this... that I have one, I'm looking at it going, okay, what games do I need to have? Or what games are, <laughs> like, really good to have on here? And I can come up with maybe four. See, I'm interested in what they're going to do with Zelda because 
is it going to be like Twilight Princess where it's on Wii U, but because they're going to release the NX, is it going to be an NX game? See, I think I think NX, they're going to announce it at E3 this year, and we won't see it for at least another year. Yeah. They're going to get at least two E3s out of it. It's a, it's a bit shit for a Wii U owner, though. I mean, it's been quite a short generation, really. I wonder if this one's always been meant to just bridge the gap. Well, rumor has it for the NX, it's going to be a handheld and a console. Well, technically, the Wii U is also. It's, but what if you can actually take it out with you? Like a cross like between a console and the 3DS, if they're bridging yeah. that gap? Yeah. So I wonder if that would just mean that it's like a, it's their next handheld that will have a home base that you can plug it into, plug it into the TV. Yeah. Because they've already established the technology with the Wii U. I think they need to make sure that it's powerful this time, though, because they need that third port, part, party support back. And because the Wii U is harder to develop for because it's underpowered, then I just... Because I like Nintendo. I like what they do. Their first party games are probably some of the best games on the market. Yeah. Every... I'm I'm wondering if there will ever come a day, though, where we see Nintendo go the way of Sega. Yeah, well, I think if it depends on the success of this next console, because the Wii U hasn't done brilliantly. No, but Nintendo has enough money in the bank to survive for 40 years going completely negative and really? still be okay. They're well, not they got a ridiculous amount of money from the Wii, didn't they? So oh, the Wii and the DS and the 3DS, and it's insane how much money they've got the new, in the bank. And the new 3DS, which isn't the same as the normal 3DS. <laughs> no, but it is. I, I'm glad I got a new 3DS. It's vastly superior is it a new new 3ds yeah i have the one that's <laughs> called the new 3ds right it's stupid shut up the Such load times are name. drastically different they're a lot faster Such a bad name yeah well it is what it is and then the 2ds oh my god yeah talk about just convoluted i was trying to uh, i was trying to explain that to crystal because she saw one and she was like well what's that one and i'm like it's the 3ds but it's not. <laughs> but it's... she's just look. She's just looking at me like really confused. I was like, "Yeah, I know what you're feeling." <laughs> it's 3ds without the 3D, so it's not a 3ds, but it plays 3ds games, but in 2D. Yeah, that's basically it. And she just looked at me in disgust and went, "That's stupid." <laughs> it's like, and that's why I hate games. Yeah. So. Bless her. Anything yeah, else about I've... Paper Mario? We are half. I, we're under halfway, so we have a lot of work to do. We do. We've got to get through it by next week. I I think it's a fair assumption to say it's about two to two and a half hours per star. Yeah. I'm eight I'm hours in. I've a lot of time into it this week, try and get it finished. Well, I've got Monday off, so. I've got so many games to play at the moment. I'm, I've got, but I'm playing through about six at the same time. <laughs> it's terrible. If I've you got could, Xenoblade, if... Xenoblade Uncharted Collection, uh, I'm playing a Guitar Hero occasionally, uh, Paper Mario, Just Cause 3, oh, just ongoing constantly. Do you remember being a kid and looking at your games and going, man, I wish I had a new game? Well, now yeah. we're kind of at the opposite. Like, I've got too many games. I've got too many games. I've I've never been like this before, but now I, ha- now I am. What I was think, working and everything, it's just... I think it's it's a very good problem to have that a lot of people would be very jealous to have. Especially with all these open world games where they last forever. I've kind of hit hit a wall with Just Cause 3 because I had a buddy come over and we probably put 20 hours into it in three days. Mm. So I'm just going to finish up the storyline and be done with it. All right. It's fun, though. Um, I haven't had a lot of time to play that yet, but I am enjoying it. It's a good just romp around and not really do anything. I just love flying on it. It's just hilarious. It's great. Uh, anything else on Paper Mario? No, I think we've covered everything so far. Jess will know all about it, of course. Actually, I think Jess said she won't be able to make the next two shows. Ah, uh, that's convenient. Jess, let's see what her message says. Oh, yep, next two shows. It's extremely convenient. We pick a long game and Jess bows out. <laughs> mm, very suspicious, Jess. Likely story. Uh, we have some emails, Dan. Emails, plural. 
emails. If you want to send us an email, factory sealed at manatank.com. Let me, let me load it here. I didn't have it open as per. We have our first one from Brian. Hello, Brian. Hi, Dan. He says, hi, Factory Seal crew. Just want to write in and say how much I enjoy listening to the show. I've gone through all of the episodes at least twice now, and I'm currently really? going through them for a third time. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry, Brian. Brian, you shouldn't do that. Your intelligence will go right down. <laughs> Though this time around, I think I will give the Toronto Batman episode a miss. Good it's choice. probably a good idea. <laughs> good, good choice. What I enjoy most about the show is the trip down memory lane, talking about games that I spent countless hours playing while growing up, chatting about Super Mario Brothers with Elias Tefexis, one of my favorite episodes, the in-depth analysis of Final Fantasy VIII, the Chrono Trigger and Silent Hill episodes, all gave my nostalgia bone a tickle. I can't wait oh, yeah. to see what you pull out in 2016 and hope you all have a good new year. Dan, you were saying Mario was filled with a lot of sexual reference. Yes. This is sexual reference. What? Tickling a bone? Yeah, I, I see just what said you that. pull out in 2016. Brian, you are a disgrace. <laughs> Uh, P.S. A game that I recommend having a look at is called Dink Smallwood. It's a shortish isometric <laughs> RPG that came out. It's all about sex with this guy. <laughs> it's a shortish isometric RPG that came out on the PC, which had some funny, humorous dialogue. The HD version of the game adds save states, a turbo button, and better mod support. It is free to download from the developer's website. It may be nostalgia talking, but I remember having lots of fun with this game ten to fifteen years ago. My oh favorite... my god, there's a town there's a town that worships ducks. I'm listen, sold. Listen, my favorite memories were punching ducks and old ladies, <laughs> inciting two royal guardsmen to fight to the death, and then punching the victor to death and getting attacked by an avatar of one of the developers. That's I am sold. <laughs> yeah. Play it. Yeah, yeah. This is going on the list. Uh, yep, definitely. PPS. I joined the Steam group. My handle is the 64-bit carp. PPPS. Are you ready for this, Dan? I'm ready. What? Jeeves. <laughs> Gluten-free. Vag. <laughs> he summed up the entire show in four words. That's brilliant. Man. I like how I get top villain as well. <laughs> oh. What? <laughs> Nobody else can do it right yet. No, because we're not that dumb. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank Thanks, you, Brian. Man. Appreciate the email. Very nice. I like reading those. Uh, yes, thank, thank you, Brian. Really appreciate the listening. I'm impressed he's on his third round. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's a lot of... Like, we're on episode 83. Let's figure average show length, two hours. That's a lot of show. Maybe he has a long commute. Maybe he just has a job where he can listen to us. Yeah. That's think small. So, Eric, on the subject of adventure games, I saw something the other day which reminded me of a game which I played once with my friends called Little Big Adventure. Have you ever played this? Little Big Adventure, no. It's it's like a, another kind of isometric game, and it's really weird. Little, I remember my friend having it, and it being really difficult. Little it was big a PS One game. Man, that box art looks shit. <laughs> wow. It looks like an, it looks like a retarded avocado with wings <laughs> being ridden like by a by a scarecrow with a robe on <laughs> over the Taj Mahal. Yeah, that's basically it. You played this? I did play this. This game looks pants. <laughs> that's why we should play it. Look at! Oh my gosh! Hold on, hold on. Look at look at the textures on this boat. Those textures. <laughs> Holy cow. Oh, that's some good shit. Hold on, I need to look up Dink Smallwood because I think I know what my afternoon is going to be. I think we should play it one week for the cast instead. 
I think you're right. The full HD version is also available for Windows and the Mac App Store for free. Free. I am downloading it. Uh, we have another email from Eric Mischenfelder. Good name, that isn't it, Eric? Yeah, yeah, it spells it the right way too. Uh, mm-hmm. Just want to throw my two cents into the best of 2015 topic. If, if I may, I would like to add a system into my list as well for my top five, and these are not in any particular order. The system I mentioned that I've fallen in love with is the Retron Five. If you're even remotely interested in it, go buy it now. Besides the controller being complete garbage, the rest of the features are fantastic and work amazing. Well, I'm sold. <laughs> this is a definite get it. <laughs> he put it. In, wow, that one was high pitched. He, he put it in caps with an exclamation. Um, I don't think you did a good job selling it, Eric, because a controller is kind of the most important part of a console. Yeah. But, hmm, isn't that the one where you can put a Super Nintendo and an NES game in it at the same time? I have no idea. What's it called? Retron 5. What happened to the first floor? Oh my goodness, you can put everything in there. Oh my god. (laughs) Everything! GBA, Game Boy Color, Game Boy, Famicom, Genesis, Mega Drive... Super Famicom, Super NES, and NES. I am buying one. The controller's shit. The, oh my gosh, look at the controller. Holy crap, that thing looks oh, like that. a hot turd. <laughs> I, the games are in high definition. Does it accept traditional controllers? I don't know. That'd be very, very, very important. It looks like there are ports on the side. Oh my goodness, that is expensive. But, honestly, the ability to play um, the Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy games on the TV, that's actually pretty it, it sweet. Op- it oppresses them as well. I think I might be buying one of these, Dan. Yeah. So oh, the controller's Bluetooth wireless. Yeah, but I'd be more if like I've got controllers for most of those consoles. If you could just plug the controller into it, it looks like there are ports on the side, unless those are the A V out ports. The controller looks terrible. It does. It looks absolute crap. Anyway, back to the email. Interesting. Well, the games that I played this year that blew me away are as follows. Xenoblade Chronicles X, Valkyria mm-hmm. Chronicles, Hex Force, and Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Ah. That is a phenomenal choice. It is. I love... I've never played the first one, but I love Knights of the Old Republic 2. You didn't play the first one? No. Three minutes into have... the game, you can rob an old lady and kill her. Well, there's you sold. Yeah, done. The only thing to make it better <laughs> is if it was an old horse. <laughs> he, goes, <sighs> he goes on, thanks for the dedication to your fans and continuing to entertain us. Oh, and Eric, my five-year-old daughter takes offense to your utter hate for Goof Troop. Hate to say it, now I'm digging it too. Take care, Eric Mischenfelder. I don't, know, you, what's, I don't know what's more disconcerting. The fact that he's starting to like Goof Troop, or that his five-year-old <laughs> daughter Goof listens Troop, to our I've never show, even seen it. What's that? I think she's not listening to the show. I think she likes Goof Troop. But it says specifically, my five-year-old daughter takes offense to your utter hatred for Goof Troop because she probably likes Goof Troop. But he calls me out specifically. She like I have a five-year-old girl that hates me. <laughs> because I don't like Goof Troop. <laughs> oh, bless you. It's like being in first grade all over again. <laughs> oh. Oh. Eric, tell your daughter I deeply apologize. And if I ever find a copy of Goof Troop in the flesh, I will sign it and send it to her. <laughs> and say this game sucks. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, thank you for your em- emails, though, boss. We really appreciate it. Oh, we need more. I like emails. We do. I we like emails. I it gives your- us stuff to talk about. Yeah. I think one of my favorite emails that we had in recent memory, I don't remember who sent it. Maybe it was, maybe it was Brianna? Somebody sent us saying, if you could pick the ideal Final Fantasy crew, who would it be? Yeah, like, I remember that Things one. like that I was awesome. off that week, but you made me do it the week after. Yeah. Good. Good. Feels. Um, What are we... Oh, Again? we're continuing Paper Mario for next week. That's right. We are, yes. Uh, we should take a minute to talk about Patreon. We should. If you don't know, we're doing patreon.com forward slash factory sealed. Uh, we've already hit two of our milestones. We are now giving away uh, digital games a couple times a month. I think we have it mistyped in either one spot or the other. Um, we're going to be, we want to take suggestions of what games you'd like to see us give away, retro digital style games. Um, we also have a very cool reward that uh, is going out that quite a few people are taking advantage of called Factory Sealed Unwrapped. And every week before the show starts, we all hop into a call just to kind of prep. But it's not really prepping as much as it is just shit talking. And that's only available for our Patreon supporters of $10 a month or more. Um, there's some funny shit in there. We actually just put a teaser trailer up on Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash factory sealed. So funny. Where I just took two minutes worth of some of the stupid things that we say during these factory sealed unwraps. Now mind you, they're completely out of context, but it just gives you an idea of how much planning really doesn't necessarily go into the show. Nope. The, those are the conversations that are happening twelve seconds before we come in. <laughs> It's pretty uh, ridiculous. It's, just... it's it's well worth going. So if you want to check that out, go to facebook.com forward slash factory sealed and you can view the video there. Yes. Uh, Daniel. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Eric. How are you? Uh, quite. How, quite how far up is your spiffy. pinky? Um, my pinky has not left. It has not dipped below the top of my ear since the show began. <laughs> My arm is mine's getting been, quite mine's been above my head. <laughs> You've got both of them above your head. Yep. It's like ears. Crystal walks in. <laughs> Daniel, what are you doing? She she actually questioned me last week. She was like, every week, I hear you do an old man American voice. <laughs> <laughs> and she went, why? And I was like, it's an ongoing joke, darling. And she's like, surely it's not funny anymore. I was like, it is. <laughs> no, that's 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 our way. I mean, something's funny, then it becomes not funny, and we just continue to beat it until it becomes <laughs> funny again. Yep. It's a very precise science of just a... <laughs> beating a joke. Yet we know uh... how to do it quite well. Where, Daniel? Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> not spiffing. <laughs> Let's go on a while. <laughs> you, every time I say your name, are you going to say hello? <laughs> oh, no. Dude. Okay. Uh, where can we find you on Twitter? On Twitter, you can find me at Frosted Sloth. You can find. Where can we find you, Eric? Oh, Daniel, we can. You, you can find me at Honest Pizza. Do we have a a, a main Twitter? I think it might be Factory underscore Seal. And if you do have Factory Sealed. Without the underscore, give us it. We'll give you a, a digital game for it. It, it might <laughs> be good, want. it might be shit. We have also yes. gone into the realm of Instagram. <gasps> Whose idea was that? That was your idea. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh. So if you would like to check out our Instagram for ludicrous pictures every so often, that is Factory Sealed Podcast. I think it's a little bit more frequently than every so often. Eh, every I do have to say, hours. <laughs> that's pretty often. <laughs> I really like that that cosplay picture of the Sonic kid because okay. <laughs> I imagine that's exactly what you look like as a kid. That was that was me. Uh, I know. It's from my uh, modeling career. <laughs> Mom, I'm gonna go fast. 
I mean, could that costume be any worse? No. So I was looking no. through some of the Sega ads, and I think you found the most perverted one. Yeah, it's really good, though. It's proper for me. But, like, Sega in general just had really, really risque ads. I'm surprised. But I do, could, I do have to give... You couldn't get away with this nowadays, could you? Oh, no, I mean, and that ad doesn't it, even make sense because it says it's got a picture of a guy playing with a joystick. I don't even think Sega had a joystick. But <laughs> they it did. It did. did it I look used to like use it that? for Mortal Kombat. And it, okay, so this picture very clearly looks makes it look like he's pleasuring himself with the joystick. <laughs> and, and on the, the left, the slogan is "The more you play with it, the harder it gets." Which doesn't make any sense because when you play a game, the more you play with it, the easier it gets. Yeah, but it's funny. I I do As, like their Eric old... read read out the under text. You sit there, eyes glued to the writhing arcade quality graphics, pulling and squeezing your knob. <laughs> now you're breathing heavily over the digital stereo sound. Now you're shooting all over the place, but it's no use. Game over. <laughs> There's no way this is a real ad. <laughs> it looks real. Did that actually exist? I think so. There was another one that I saw for the Sega Game Gear mm-hmm. where um, it was a picture of a guy from behind with his pants off. <laughs> and it said something about pl- finally playing with yourself won't make you go blind. And then the guy turns around and he's got his Game Gear covering his crotch. <laughs> I gotta find that one. Put that on Instagram. So yeah, this is the kind of thing we have on our Instagram if you're interested. I want to find that one so I can read to you exactly what it said. Because man, it was funny. I don't. I really, honestly, don't think that one that you put up is real. I think it's real. I'd like to think it was. It's pretty. I do funny. like their like their tagline that they had on there called. It says it takes ages to be this good. It takes Sega to be this good. Where they just it, they anagrammed Sega into ages. That's pretty ingenious. Yes. Oh, here we I go. I like it a lot. It's really good. But it's just such a. Per- here we go. Something to do with your hands that won't make you go blind. <laughs> here, I'm gonna put this up on. I'll put this up on Instagram. But I want to show you right now. That's a disgrace. Now you can play with yourself for hours with Sega's handheld full-color game system, the arcade, blah, 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 blah. And then they capitalize, it's coming soon. It will fulfill your wildest fantasies. (laughs) I love the guy, he just looks like he's tracking it. (laughs) (laughs) Why? Like, you wouldn't even try to play a game like that. Like, you're not even looking at the screen. (laughs) You can even fiddle around in total oh, darkness. Guys, you got to check this out on Facebook or Instagram. It's so good. Oh, God. We got a little sidetracked there. We did. Um, we will be back next week. Jess will not be here. Thomas will. We'll be finishing Paper Mario. What are we going on to after that so people can get a head start? I think I actually just updated Grim this Grim Fandango. Ooh, that was just free on PS Plus last month. Or this month. Once I've got it downloaded. Thankfully, nice. I haven't played it yet. And then after that, February 7th, we'll be hitting up Oddworld Abe's Exodus. Oh, yes. I love that game. Yes. So I threw something on the list the other day that I want to make sure that we all could try to source because I really want to play it. It's called Time Splitters Future Perfect. Oh, my God. I love Time Splitters Future Perfect. I've still got it. So do I. That's kind of why I wanted to keep playing it. I think it would Can be you a play little... it on Xbox 360? I don't know. Oh, I hope you can. I've got it for original Xbox. Otherwise, I'll have to recover my Xbox Crystal from under the bed at my mother's. Xbox Crystal? Yeah, the see-through one. Oh, shit. But that's worth a bit now. Let's see if it's ex- if it's backwards compatible. Oh dear, it doesn't look like it. 
Oh. Unfortunately, it's not. We'll still, oh, we sucks. need to find a way to play because I loved that game. I love it so much where they throwing bricks through the windows and shit. Oh, God. I love, I would love, love, love a next-gen time splitters. I, w- I don't know why that series died. It was so fun. It was just so stupid as well. well it would the be multiplayer, great. multiplayer, oh, my God. Online, online multiplayer for that game would be awesome. Well, just the multiplayer awesome. in general. I remember getting together with some buddies and playing that. And the oh, yeah. the different characters, you have the, the robotic fish tank with a goldfish in it. You have a giant gingerbread man, a duck. Yeah, monkeys. So good. All kinds. It had some really good game modes as well. It kind of had like cod zombies before they did it. And stuff. Uh, I want to see when I put that on the list because I hope it's not too far down. I think it is, though. So I'll have to get my original Xbox with the big, chunky controller. <laughs> I put it for... It'd be in April, April 3rd. It's not too far. Okay, we can. it's not too far, now. So, but then you owe us a game for the 14th, Dan. You got to fill something in. I will pick one, don't worry. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for this week. Any final thoughts, Daniel? I don't have thoughts. Didn't think so. We'll see you next week. Oh, <laughs>